previously on Ace Attorney Investigations 2. <laughs> you may have hated me to the very end, Pops, but I, I've always looked up to you. Ah. Uh, thank you for everything up till now. And goodbye. You. Since when did you? All I've been able to do is depend on me, Sebastian! And now back to wagging my little finger. Hello! The Sneak B. Back with some more Ace Attorney Investigations 2. We last left off. Oh, so much justice. So much satisfaction. So many cinnamon buns. Oh, God. It was so. Oh, unbelievably f satisfying. It just. I, it was such a great redemption arc for Sebastian. I honestly, last episode might have been one of my favorite episodes over the entire Ace Attorney franchise. It, like it was just, it was so good. I loved how they they finished off his arc. Oh, I mean, hell, there's still more to the case. Maybe there's still a bit more, but um, assuming you know that was it, and there is anything else, I really, I thought they did just a masterful job just with Sebastian's character. I couldn't believe just <laughs> dude, what the what a 180 that made that he, they made with his character. It's like we go from sort of just like being like, oh my god, this guy's so ridiculous. I just you, you can't take him seriously. Don't give a shit about him, pretty much. And then at the end, we're just like, oh my god, all the hugs, all the hugs in the world, and at least 30 of my hugs. Just oh, so good. I God, I have I have loved every episode of this game, like every single episode. If for me, that's sort of, I, it's like unheard of for an Ace Attorney game. Like, I don't know, there, there's always that, those few moments in Ace Attorney games where there's like a lull, or you get really frustrated, you're just like, what the fuck am I supposed to do, or, I don't know, it just gets kind of like bo boring moment, gathering evidence, or whatever, and I, I haven't had that moment in this game. Like, every episode has just been significant, interesting, incredibly engaging, it, it, I'm just, I'm so impressed with this game, and I absolutely see why everyone loves it so much it i think it's definitely going probably be my favorite ace attorney game probably beating out trials and tribulations and apollo justice sorry guys you guys were great but fuck me this game is like this game is immaculate in terms of its writing oh just fucking love it but yes <laughs> unbelievably that was only the beginning part of this to this case we still got more to do oh yeah that's right there's actually a person behind all this shit right we gotta find uh I, I don't know. Now, yeah, Len came in. And he's like, hey, I'm going to come in to tell you about that thing that happened 12 years ago. I'm trying to figure out what the hell that's all about. I don't know. I, I don't know what to expect, to be honest. I'm hoping this next part isn't like three hours long because <laughs> I'm hoping that was the one three hour section. I, I think that's probably I think it's my, my, my only criticism was just just some of these sections. I feel like are just a little bit too long, but that's incredibly uh, minor. I think. <laughs> uh, all right. But anyway, the middle part one. Grand Turnabout, let's get started. Oh, we're back here. We're back here again. Where am I? Hey, there's Hugh Jackman again. April 6, 2.52 p.m. Outside Grand Tower, temporary fill lot. Uh, um, could you please give it a rest already? <laughs> <laughs> the fucking ding dong doodly you just say to me? I'll tell you it all. It's best for y'all's sake to come clean. <laughs> oh, God. Uh... Lana, please! I'm pretty sure you're getting really close to my Lana threshold already. Staff has the lips sealed shut as the reporters continue their tenacious and negotiations. <laughs> uh, if you're not here to cooperate with the investigation, I must ask that you get the fuck out of here, please. You know what? Officer, you can get down and suck my dick, rat! My big old red hairy dick! Put a sock in a copper! <laughs> Y'all couldn't even stop who's still a <laughs> God, I don't, I don't know. Are, is it possible for two people to be this stupid? Not only did they secretly raise a giant monster, but now the staff's trying to cover it up. Like I said, we haven't been raising any monsters here in the film line. <laughs> what Jake just said? Said you didn't saw Gore to yourself? Sure, I saw it, but it's like we were keeping it at the film line. <laughs> and again, I already know what that is. I, was, I think it was pretty obvious from just, even if it was sort of faded, what it was in that little flashback picture. Won't everyone be so shocked? Uh, mind if I butt in? It's probably me, right? Yep, thought so. Hey. So he said that he arrested both, uh, Courtney and his, and her son? Because he said, Lang was like, all right, I've come here for two people. And then, like, the son shows up, and it's just like, 
you know. Oh, John! Whatever, and then she's like, and you too, Courtney. I'm, wait, I'm sorry, the sun? <laughs> what, what does the sun do? He summoned Rosella. Ah, fuck, not you too. Uh, Mr. Edward. And John. Oh, y'all come here to search for the monster too? I swear to God, Blada, if you don't get out of my game right now. We're searching for a criminal, not a monster. The only monster here is you, Lana. Lacey says, the darkness inside a criminal's heart can be likened to a monster. I, I, I can see from this angle that there's nothing written there. Well, when it comes to killing people, crim criminals are much different from monsters. Hey, Jelang, this is a problem. I can't let outsiders into the crime scene. Shut up, maggot. These are all key figures in the case. I'd like them to be here when the investigation resumes. Agent Lang, regarding what you said about resuming the investigation, where do you intend to start? We'll start by reviewing the case. Today, the body of President Wang was found here at the, the film lot. The president's whereabouts from two nights ago are still unknown. It seems he snuck out from under the eyes of his bodyguards and ventured outside. And that night was the last time he was seen alive. It was when he met with you, Judge Courtney, on the roof of the Grand Tower. Oh! <laughs> Is this milk sweating? Sweating? Oh my god! <laughs> it's perspiring! There's like condensation coming off the... <laughs> going off the, the cart, the milk garden. Wow, it's amazing! It, it, and the killer was having his ice cream sweat too? God, you, all these characters are so talented. Oh, uh, he knows something too. What? What? I, I, I have no idea. I don't know what is going on with this. Oh, fucking shit. Oh dear. So, why did you meet with the president? That, I, I cannot say. Is he his baby daddy? Can't, can't tell us. He's been under suspicion of murder. I mean, seriously, bro? Can't say. Why not? Miss Courtney, if you don't say anything, you'll be more suspicious. Not so fast. Ha! So huh. She must have a reason to clam up. I think you're somehow involved in the president's assassination. Objection! Objection, come on! The president's body was only discovered today. That still leaves a blank of one whole day after Judge Courtney met with him un unaccounted for. So don't be so impatient. We're gonna fill in that blank right here, right now. Oh, by the way, you guys point out apparently the reason why I uh, I seem to be able to sometimes uh, skip the text and stuff is actually something from the uh, fan translation of this game. A bit of a bit of a glitch. Um, okay, okay, that makes sense. The evening on that blank day in question is what's important. What happened here last night? What happened here last night? Speaking of which, oh, yep, I can skip it here too. <laughs> so why don't you tell us, John Marsh? Me? We know you were here last night. What? John was here? With that little missy's testimony and the footprints are we found, we can easily prove it. John, you're rehearsing here last night, right? You were spying on me? Uh, um, I'm sorry. I just came to check up on things. You really shouldn't be staying up so late, you know. <laughs> Mind your own business. Oh, oh my god, did this backpack just flip open and there was a whole bunch of cartons of milk inside of it? I don't know, it happened so fast. I I, I kind of saw it on my peripheral vision, but I think that's what it was. John Marsh, the, that young lady was worried about you. Oh, oh, oh shit, we're about to watch Johnny Boy get chewed out here. Aha, uh -huh. he's in trouble with his mommy. You too, Edgeworth. Uh oh. You will not speak to her like that. S sorry. Ah, <laughs> ah. Uh, uh. I feel like Justine's character, I, I feel like, especially after this case, it's really just kind of like, like, holy moly, like, exponentially gotten better. I mean, she was already a good character, just, just, just makes her seem so much more human, you know? How many times have I told you to be more mindful of the way you speak? No, Mom, I'm not gonna have an English accent. You will have an English accent! I swear to God, I will beat that accent into you! You and your dirty American accent! Yeah, it's true, our accent kind of sucks. <laughs> it's just me, or does Miss Courtney's personality seem kind of different? Seems to be as strict with her own son as she is with those who violate the law. Shut up, Edgeworth! Are you listening to me and earlier as well? <laughs> Am I just gonna let her finish? 
You should always bear that in mind, no matter the occasion. Not so fast! Not so fast. Okay, seriously, shut up. <laughs> Can we get on with the investigation already? I, I was being dramatic earlier. Wasn't anyone paying attention to me? Ah, oh, pardon me. For Judge Courtney to get carried away like that. This must be your motherly side. Ah, beautiful. Agent Lang, do you suspect John? All I want is the truth. Why was the president killed? Hey, the way he came in like that made me think he was like real, like arresting him or something. I was like, the fuck? You really think he did something? And I want to know who killed him. I'll do whatever it takes to find out. Seems the president was 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 like family to him. John, would it be all right if we asked you a few questions? Sure, it's fine. I've got nothing to hide anyway. <laughs> was that milk in your backpack? John's rehearsal. I wasn't feeling too great during yesterday's shoot, so I made a few bloopers. They're reshooting the scene today, so... Well, I decided to rehearse a little on my own. That's all. I do it all the time. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Oh, he's got a little cow in his book bag, too. He really loves cows. <laughs> you were rehearsing alone that late at night. John, when I called you last night, you told me you were at the hotel. <laughs> oh, boy. Judge Corny, I believe you have a rebellious teenager in your future. Shut up, Edgeworth! You called him. About what time was that? I believe it was around 11 p.m. I require him to call me every night. That's our rule whenever he stays away from home. The truth is, I, I was at the film lot during that time. So you lied to me. Oh my god. Oh, the anger is filling up right within my boobies. You see it? You see it, Edward? Yes, I see them. Good god. Quit pulling my hand towards them. Ha! Ah! I'm, I'm sorry. Miss Courtney sure is angry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not funny. Okay, it's a little funny. Yeah, it is. I think it's an admirable that he practiced on his own, even if he hid it from his mom. <laughs> Sure, he was simply. She was simply worried. Who knows what could have happened to him out, out alone so late at night? And he was talking to a giant, <laughs> to a camera with a cloth over it. In reality, he did get caught up in yesterday's incident. But John said there wasn't anything out of the ordinary, right? Is that really the truth? Don't think so, son. All right, you're gonna show me that milk in that backpack. It wasn't feel too great during the yesterday's shoot, so I made a few bloopers of John's practice video. Just present this, right? Yeah, there we are. Oh, you can't lie to Daddy Edgeworth. That's right, I'm your new daddy. Actually, you know what? No, I'm actually Sebastian's new daddy. Oh, my God. Oh, I hope, this, I hope this game ends with that. That would be the absolute cherry on top of this beautiful fucking game. And we just see Edgeworth embracing Sebastian warmly in his arms. Oh, oh fuck. That would be so good. Uh, hey, Mr. Edward. Nico, why do you want to see that so bad? I don't, I don't know. I just want to see somebody hug Sebastian for fuck's sake. Anybody. Anybody. Just because I can't hug Sebastian myself. God damn it. That little bastard. I love him so damn much now. Was well, anything out of the ordinary? That's a lie, isn't it? We have this VHS tape right here. Uh, could that be? That's right. It's a video you recorded of your performance, ding dong. Uh... What? You're telling me you have a video from last night? Exactly, and in this video, there's clearly something that is out of the ordinary. <laughs> this is a monster's footprint. Did you say that monster's footprints are commonplace in a, on a film set? John, why did you conceal this video from us? No reason, really. Not so fast! Not so fast. Hey, pup. This is no joking matter. You had a reason to hide it, right? John Marsh, answer him clearly! <laughs> but, but, Mom... <laughs> well... That's right. Your mom's gonna grind your gears if you don't get your shit together. I didn't want anyone seeing me rehearse. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, is this his theme? Ooh, it's cool. It's only a cowboy theme. Hey, cowboy! Ah, I get it! I get it now! In other words, you're embarrassed about others seeing you practice. Yeah, got a problem with that? I'm a cool kid, all right? I, I mean, I'm not a kid, I'm a teenager. You're saying that's why you hit the, the evidence. John! Ow! <laughs> yep, you had milk in there! C 
quit nagging me. You've already busted me. What more do you want? Yeah, the footprints were there, but I just practiced and headed home. How come you're so calm after finding those goddamn doodly footprints? It's a monster, you know? Raven Live Monster, he's coming over to eat you! You gotta talk to him and save the town from his evil blue zilliness! The hell is that lady been smoking? I've been trying to figure that out for the past fucking seven games! I thought it was just a part of the set. Besides, there's lots of other weird stuff around here, too. He's suspicious, Chief! The kid, this kid's really suspicious! You're right! The smell of a scoop stinks high to, to high heaven! Shut up! We're done talking! Objection. No! My figure says nay! We're not done here yet! It's not over yet! Stop saying that! What now? Monster's footprints weren't the only unusual things that happened last night. Besides the monster's footprints, what other unusual thing happened last night? You talked to that fucking weird thing. Um... Take that. The Mozilla head! Monster's head fell from the roof of that building. Surely you must have known about that. Uh, I don't know anything about it. What I think might have happened... Because I, I believe, I mean, he was obviously wasn't talking to the crane with the cloth on it. They thought we thought was Gordy. I think there was somebody else up there who we could sort of just barely see. I think that person may have asked him if he could move the the head back to the roof because people on the set do know how to take it apart and put it away. I think he was. I, I'm betting. Maybe he's asked asked him to keep it a secret. I don't know why he would agree to do that though. But man, unless he unless he thought he was talking to the dinosaur or something. But again. <laughs> Pretty clearly not a dinosaur, is that true? I told you, I just practiced a bit and then I went back. I don't know anything about Mozilla's head falling or anything like that. Or do you have evidence to show that I know something? There certain, certainly isn't any evidence of that. It's also possible that it fell after John had already gone back. If there's no evidence, then I, like I said, we're done talking. So that John doesn't really want to talk about last night. Could he be adding something af after all? Not so fast. It's all right, I'll do it. I'll leave it up to Lang here. No, you always fuck it up. Shut up. Wait up. Agent Lang. <laughs> Says uh, as I thought. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. This video backs up my lo my logic. Huh? Is there something in the video that's related to the case? Yeah. Take a good hard look at the monster costume in the top left. I saw that too. I saw it when I went back to edit that it was unzipped. The Mozilla costume? Try comparing it with the one over over there right now. Zipped up? I mean it just seems it seems sort of like out of the ordinary, just the way it, it like someone had like just drawn a zipper and then just kind of copied and pasted it onto the top of its sprite. It looks like it looks like it's just hanging there limply though. And the zipper on his back is zipped up tight. Zipper on his back. What? This discrepancy is holy fucking doodahs! Yeah, the difference is plain to see. In the video of the zipper is clearly open. That's right. Someone was inside. What? Mr. Powers, the costume zipper usually... It's always zipped up tightly when it's not in use. Mr. Prosecutor, do you remember my logic from before? Two nights, Two nights ago, Courtney, Courtney pushed, pushed the president, president off the roof, roof and killed, killed him. him. Oh. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. Gonna move his body and put him in the big dino suit. Afterwards, he, he snuck, snuck into the, the film, film lot to hide the body. body. In here. Wouldn't it be easy to hide a body in a costume behind all this equipment? Then all she had to do last night was retrieve the body. You're saying the body was hidden inside the costume? Yeah, that's right. Judge Courtney. Two nights ago, you pushed the president off the roof of the tower. You then hid the body inside the monster costume. I... I didn't know such a thing. Say what you want. You're the, the only one who could have done it. That should have already been proven impossible. The film lot was locked at the time. Judge Courtney could not have entered this place. And what if there was... was an accomplice? What? I'll tell you my reasoning, so listen up. All right, let's hear it, buddy. See if you can actually get something right. Oh, mother, mother and son theory. When the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting at the film lot. If John was an accomplice, the problem with the locks would be resolved. The two of them then hid the president's body inside that monster costume over there. 
Do you think this crime had such an elaborate plan? Take a life of a na nation's president. An elaborate plan is to be expected, don't you think? Overruled? John would never take part in such a crime. Yeah, she would never she would never have have her son be involved in that. You're the one being suspected. Your words don't carry much weight. I wouldn't think those two had a sufficient motive for something like this, th though. Well, maybe they had a motive that we didn't know about. You were the last one to meet with the president, and you're still keeping the details secret. Don't you think it's only natural that you're being suspected? Judge Courtney, is there no way for you to tell us your secret? My apologies, I just cannot, no matter what. However, when the time I can talk about it comes, I will surely let you know. So, if you could please... So eventually you can tell us? Why are we waiting then? Believe you? Is that what you wanted to say? That's what all criminals say. And you, pup, you've got an explanation. Hurry up and spit it out. Huh, I didn't do nothing. That's all I'm saying, bitch. Both mother and son won't talk. You still gonna defend them like this? It's true Judge Courtney's actions are a, mis a mystery. However, we still don't know whether or not that ties in with a motive for murder. Yeah, that's right. Their motive for murder can wait. For now, let's, ta let's talk about the situation surrounding the crime. And the fact these two are the only ones who could have done it. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's actually not like a dreadful theory. <laughs> I feel like... Not quite as dumb as a lot of other Lang's theories, but I mean, we know Judge Courtney's character by this point. She would never involve her son in anything like that. Uh, when the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting at the film lot. If it, John was an accomplice, the problem with the locks would be resolved. The two of them then hid the president's body inside the monster costume. In the video, we cannot see the inside of the costume. So can you really say for certain that the body was placed inside? Yeah, I'll give you that, that much. In that case, why don't we try examining it? The inside of the co that costume. There might be some traces left inside. Mr. Powers, maybe me examine the inside of the costume. Sure, go ahead. But it might be kind of stinky. Since I sweat a lot, I sweat a lot in there. Yeah, I hear those suits, those big massive suits can be really, <laughs> really like sitting inside of an oven. This is incredibly dirty. Ew! That's strange. We always make sure to clean it after using it. So that sweat da damn it so that the sweat doesn't damage the costume. Yeah, Isn't that just this just proof that someone besides you used this costume? I say that dirt from the body probably got into, got into the costume. The president's body did fall on top of the monster's footprint. That must be where the dirt came from. Shut up, Kay! Ah crap. Are you satisfied now? There's dirt inside the costume and must have gotten there when the body was hidden inside. No, it came from Obviously came from Blaze's glove! Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, but there's yeah. Jim with every yellow stains on it too. Yeah, sorry, Jimmy Dean sausage nuggets. Oh, silly glang. Uh, oh, I got a frog in my throat there for a second. Dirt! Dirt got into that costume and the body was hidden inside it. Is that really the case? Oh, I hate when you do that to me. <laughs> you have a problem with that. There's a fair amount of dirt inside the front of the costume. Yeah, that is a lot of dirt. However, I would like you to focus on the state that the body is in. It's lying on top top of the dirt, and yet there is no dirt on the front of the body. The body really was inside the costume. Then it's strange that the front of the body isn't stained with more dirt. Ugh. Well, then how would you explain it? I was actually, I was kind of thinking more along the lines of the, the yellow stain on his clothes. Possibly also would have stained the inside of the, the costume, but whatever, that works too. How did the dirt get inside the costume? The video footage is very likely that someone was inside the costume. But just who could it have been? Probably the person he was talking to. Where have I seen this? What's the matter, Kay? I just feel like I remember seeing something that looked like this dirt somewhere before. But where was it? Is that on the gloves? It's like weird kind of white stuff on it. Yeah, it is! I was kind of wondering, I was like, I saw the white specks of the... Uh, on those gloves, we never really explained that. It's, and it's the same on the inside. Where was it? There were these bits of gray fragment mixed in with the dirt. Yep. Gray fragments? Oh my god, there does seem to be something other than normal dirt mixed into it. Something must have gotten stuck to it. 
It lost a bit of my dad. There was significance to that. All right, so I guess stuck to it. This may merit a closer look. Where do we see dirt that looks like what stuck on the inside of the costume? These fucking demon gloves! Booyah! This dirt has some great bits mixed into it. Huh? What of it? We found an item belonging to a certain man that was covered in the same type of dirt. That is to say, these gloves. Those dirt stains certainly look the same. But tell me, is what exactly is this gray substance? God, I've been wondering. This gray substance is plastic, concrete, paint. Um, concrete? Yeah, okay. This gray substance must be the fragments of concrete, I guess, from the footprints. You mean the stuff that was scattered around the monster's footprints? Exactly. Meanwhile, who do these gloves, which are stained with the same kind of dirt, belong to? Oh, I remember! We found it at Blaze's place! Earlier today, we went to Blaze's garage. There we discovered these dirt stained gloves. Come to think of it, there were also hammers, shovels, and other tools placed inside as well. Oh. So someone just come out here and pound the pound the pavement in the shape of these these footprints? That would be insanely difficult to do. <laughs> like, seriously. I mean, we're not, we're not all built like John fucking Wick, where he just <laughs> easily smacked the ground into the shape of a footprint. Why would mechanics gloves intend to be used on machines be covered in dirt? If you broke the concrete with the hammer and then dug into the soil with the shovel, then it's only natural for dirt like that to get on the gloves. Like, seriously. Well, well, then again, his dad does have some rock hard abs, so. Hey, maybe he could do it, but, but then, he, I mean, how could he have, right? Was he already dead by the time that we had had him arrested? I guess, but he had to, right? Because he had the he had the gloves on right when he threw the stuff away. With the, he, right? Right? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> you know, because he threw the stuff away and then uh, his son, Sebastian, found it and had the, the, the glove stamp marks on it. So he had to be wearing the gloves when he tossed it, right? Then maybe... Yes, the true nature of the monster's footprints has been made clear. It's possible that these footprints were dug up by Blaze the Best himself. Fucking hell, wow. Chisel. It's possible. Huh. It's possible, you say. Please do enlighten me. God damn it. That guy, even, in, even after being arrested twice now, he's still fucking coming up in the case. So I honestly have no clue. Why on earth would he do something like that? Fuck, fine. Oh, that guy's crazy as shit. Why did he make the monster footprints? Thinking about it, the answer must be, he was digging something up. He buried something. Well, yeah, it's gotta be he was digging something up. <laughs> I was like, it's kind of the same thing. No, I meant, he buried something isn't trying to hide it. But no, there's no, don't seem to be any covered holes here. It's possible he's digging something up. Probably with something like this. Last night at this spot, there was something that Blaze, Blaze needed to dig up. For that reason, he broke the lock on the back door and, s and sneaked into the film lot. Using the hammer and shovel, he, he set to work. <laughs> Sir, no, you're telling me that he just coincidentally dug those in the shapes of giant hoof prints. I can understand maybe one accidentally being that way, but why would it, how would the other ones be exactly that way? He placed the items he dug up into his bag and before he could, could fill in the holes. Oh, that's when John came to practice. Exactly. Blaze panicked and had no choice but to hide himself in the Mozilla costume nearby. Grr. I think you would deduce to so much from just a pair of dirt stained gloves. However, all this is merely a possibility. There's still no proof that he was the one who was hiding in that costume. For all we know, he must have left the scene once he finished digging. On the contrary, such proof does exist and can be seen in the video. This video was recorded, Blaze was definitely inside the film lot. What? Well, I can't blame Agent Link for not noticing. Um. There's between the current film lot. And the one in John's video, along with the state of Blaze's garage. It's all too clear that Blaze was still here. What proves that Blaze was still at the film lot when this video was recorded? 
Um. Oh, the bag there? Is that bag not there anymore? Yeah. Oh! Silly Gooberhead. This bag placed near the costume. There was an identical one inside Blaze's garage. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Fucking hell. First the dirt and the gloves, and now the bag. It seems there is a connection. Man, okay, okay, so this this did. This had to have been before uh, we had arrested him, obviously. Obviously. It was just a little confusing because after we had finished, you know, the last case, the first, this first case started off with, uh, you know, the, the bashing of the sound and the, the bashing sound of the dino and stuff. Although, I mean, when we really think about it, that wouldn't have made sense that it would have, that occurred the moment our other case ended because we literally just walked out of the building. <laughs> wow, who was, what was that sound we would have thought to ourselves? That's my proof. Blaze was inside the costume. Ergo, hitherto, therefore, the president's body could not have been hidden inside it. You suck! I suck! Seems I was able to refute Agent Legs' reasoning. Someone needs to go investigate Blaze's house right away, pal! Do you know what's inside that bag? Yes, sir! Hold it, you goddamn ding dong doodlies! I swear to God, you take my scoop away, I will fucking cut every one of you! Y'all pop down, listen up! Y'all just been saying whatever works best for y'all! And the noisy one returns. Fuck. And there's the that's there's the bot footprints of the bot Mozilla. They just some random holes dug up by the old coop. I mean, how do you explain them coincidentally being the shape like hooves? Yeah, I, I'll be honest. That that's kind of throwing me off a little bit. I mean, like I can understand one being like that, but how the hell could they all have looked exactly like that? Huh? I believe the true nature of these footprints has already been proven quite logically. If she brings that up, I will. Logic, smogic, I ain't buying it. It's what you want, but I know what I saw, and I saw Mozilla. Referring to how she saw Mozilla out the window of the Grand Tower. Preposterous! <laughs> nope, of course I can't rely on Lana to, to do anything right. <laughs> I thought she was actually gonna ask, like, How can you explain them being shaped like hooves? And I was gonna be like, Oh wow, two brownie points for you, Lana. I think I might be saying we just kind of up sliding under the rug. In which case, I think that's gonna be, a, I think that might be one of the things that's a little bit, a little bullshit. <laughs> also, have you ever, like, I mean, when you smash concrete, it, it's like, it, it goes all over the place. You know, you don't know how the fuck it's gonna crack. Or, so, the odds that it would turn into like a perfect circle like that, and, and always with that little V in the middle, is it's more it's more than a little ridiculous. Bottle journalist souls, we haven't done. It. We we ain't have ain't have none of it. The statement is an insult to journalists everywhere. God damn it. <laughs> ah, that's right. There's more to the monsters than just those footprints. I remember hearing that Sonny over there was seen with the monster earlier. So you can see there's something there, that little smudge. That is somebody. I reckon that gal of there says she witnessed herself. Good God, can you not see the flashback picture, guys? These two are together, all meaningful talk runs to a halt. Great, I'm about to break Lotta again. Well, we, we knew just what the monster really was. I don't, I think this two are quiet down. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't it anything you can do? Monster's true identity, I already know what it is. Oh, don't much choice, let's see what we can do. Isn't there something you want to tell us about the monster? Go ask him. Ask him right now, too! Hold it. Please settle down, you fucks. Regarding the true identity of that monster, I already know what it is. Thank God. <laughs> I figured this out fucking days ago. What'd you say? That's right. The video job recorder provided the hint that I needed. What you talking about? Well, you guys switch places. Miss Nichols saw Gordy. When she went to check up on John's practice, and at that time, she mistook something for Gordy. Oh, here we go. Monster can be seen in this photograph, thank God. What, ain't that just some plain old souvenir photo? Y'all don't really think I can pull the wool over the eyes of a like me, do you? Okay, fuck you both. What if Miss Eagles really see Miss looking for Gordy this big fucking camera, you doodles? <laughs> Oh, you two are beyond fucking stupid. Naturally, Gordy's true identity was this camera crane. What? Video job recorder was shot from fairly high up. A shot from this position would be impossible without a camera crane. I see. Okay. So no, of course he didn't think it was the fucking 
the fucking thing. Okay, I see. When they when they switch angles like that, it kind of confused me. Maybe think like the camera or something had switched that way. But that was actually the camera that was recording him here. I see. Hold it! But there, there ain't no way Miss Nichols would mistake a camera crew for Gordy. Oh, I wonder about that, Miss Nichols. Y yes. Really, you said the, pr the prescription of for your glasses didn't match your eyesight anymore, correct? Yes, lately it seems like my eyesight suddenly got a lot worse. So you say that you weren't able to see Gordy very clearly in the dark. That's right, his silhouette was all I could pick out. But, but remember what Miss Nichols said. And I quote, its skin was really scaly, almost like a rip reptile. Camera Queens ain't got no flesh on them, little old skin. It just bears the freight. That is certainly true, at least in this the case of this photo. However, last night it did have skin. Y'all just do whatever you get, 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 big, get, get in the way of our big scoop, ain't you? That was not my intention, but sure. But since I come this far, might as well fuck up your the rest of your day. <laughs> it's time to put an end to your nonsense. Gordy's skin is right before our very eyes. All right, here we go. This is the skin, Gordy, that of Gordy that Mystical saw. Booyah, bitch! Miss Little stated in her testimony earlier it looked like it was going to rain last night. While it never actually rained, John would still cover the camera and crane with a rainproof sheet. Which to Miss Nichols looked like my monster skin. <laughs> wow! <laughs> uh, she freaks out and then the, the bear trap closes and it startles her. <laughs> you gotta be shitting my dick right now! I am not shitting your dick, bro. Isn't that right, John? Man, you saw through it all. Not bad, old man. Ah, oh, thanks, you little snot-nosed shit. Unfortunately, the Gordy that Miss Nichols saw was something more than an illusion. Not again. Looks like my dream has been shriveled up and died once again. All because of fucking Gordy! Gordy! Gordy was never real, never will be real. But mentor. You need to find a new mentor. That's also not me, though. <laughs> Seems like things have finally settled down. Thank baby Jesus. I really thought the boy was hiding something from me. Guess I had old ding dong doodly wrong. I'm gonna ding dong doodly you in a second if you don't stop talking. Now we all figured out the true form of the monster, everyone seems refreshed. We all good? Everybody all gonna see y'all hold it anymore? Actually, there's two people here who are totally bummed out. <laughs> hey, leg, I have returned. Great, forensics number 83. What'd you find? Poor Zen, sir, we've got the results of President Wang's autopsy. Good, show it to me. Contusions and bone fractures are, are found across the body, resulting from tremendous pre tremendous pressure. So this was the cause of death. In other words, he was crushed to death. Ah uh ha, -huh, I called that too. I thought as much. I guess we could have just waited for the autopsy report to have, <laughs> to have broken his logic, but whatever. It's all good. The old stain on his chest is currently under investigation. We think the, the guy who killed him might have pissed on him as one last farewell. But it seems that gunpowder residue was found on his right hand. Sunflower residue? I didn't know the president was into gardening. <laughs> no gunpowder residue. Trees have been left behind when a gun is fired. So it's been found on his bot. On his right hand, it's possible the president fired a gun. Gun, huh? But we didn't find any guns when we investigated this area. I guess they must have gotten rid of it. Unexplained gunpowder residue. I'll have to look over the autopsy report later. Now that Agent Lang seems to have our answer. The president did not die from falling off the roof of the Grand Tower. Rather, he died from a being crushed by a nerd Mozilla's big fat fucking head. I can't deny it. Looks like your logic was right after all. Ugh. Of course it was. It's always right. This means suspicion surrounding Miss Courtney should be cleared up, right? Yes. Not only the cause of death, but the time of death proves her innocence as well. Judge Courtney met with the president two nights ago. However, according to the autopsy report, the time of death was around 11 p.m. last night. Mozilla's head also fell last night. It matches up perfectly. That's a relief. Not so fast. What now, dude? Isn't a bit too early to be relieved. Agent Lang. The president died after being crushed by Mozilla's head. That I will admit. But the problem is, who was responsible for the falling head? 
Brazilian's head fell last late last night, and last night the one who was at the film lot was. What do you say? Surely you're not implying. That's right. You killed him, didn't you? Ugh, John Marsh. Oh shit. That pup is hiding something. He was at the scene where the body was discovered last night. He also saw the footprints. And despite that, he still claims to know absolutely nothing about the incident. Isn't that a bit too convenient? These footprint-shaped holes have not been proven to be related to the case. Just because he saw the holes doesn't necessarily mean that he's involved in the incident. You sure about that? Take a look at the pup's face. Oh god, dude, yeah, you have a horrible poker face. He looks pretty shaken up to me. Looks like he's hit the mark. But John doesn't want to talk talk about it. He doesn't feel like talking. And I have an idea of my own. Let's check the tape. Agent Lang, what is your attention? The police have a device that lets you analyze the video footage up close and personal. Agent Lang, you suspect John enough to go that far? As long as John's lips are sealed, it may be the only way for us to get closer to the truth. Dang Gumshoe, if I'm not mistaken, you have the device with you, correct? Yes, one of my seven devices of- SHUT UP! Just give it to me already! <laughs> Is your analysis ready to go, sir? Now we're talking. Oh cool, do I get to do the thing? Prosecutor to Edgeworth, would you please perform the video analysis for us? Yeah, sure, why not? Throw up- sh show off my amazing DS capabilities. So he wants me to do it. Who knows what kind of faults that wolfman will find in it? This isn't exactly my strong suit, but I suppose I have no choice. Time to find a bear covered in soot again. A new clue shown on the video. Oh, hello! Damn, dude! Nice bod! Whoa! Who is that? Who is that dead chiseled man right there? This is. Oh, it's Wang! It's Wang himself! What's the matter? I want to see two! Hmm? Ah! Hey! What's wrong? Show it to me! Prosecutor Edgeworth, request you submit the evidence to the court. We're not in court. We're in the middle of a fucking vacant lot. Let's take a look at the top right corner of the zoomed in video. The, this, this person is... The, the, the president! Impossible! Huh? N no way. Since we finally found it at last, the evidence that points to the true killer. Video places John at a major disadvantage. You're wrong. That's not right. I didn't know anything about this. It's not gonna cut it. It's clear that you and the victim were together at the same place where his body was later found. John Marsh, there's no doubt you killed the president. No, this can't be. Why? Why would you? John, please, don't tell me. Did you really kill the president? Mr. Edgeworth, is there really this, this really decisive evidence? It's definitely not good evidence. I mean, it's good evidence, but not for us. Mr. Prosecutor, looks like even you can object to this. Ah, 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 ah. That pup said he didn't know anything, right? And yet the president's right here in the video. John, what are you hiding? Come on, man. Is it worth going to jail for? John, please tell us the truth. The truth is... The truth is... It's all my fault. John Marsh, what did you do? Did you murder the president of that country? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Mozilla's head falling was all my fault. Oh, God. That's not what I want to hear you say. During the rehearsal. While I was setting up the equipment on the roof, I used the heater. After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. Then my mom called me, so I let the film lot. When I came back to the lot after the phone call was over, Musil's head was... that was on, on the roof had fallen. And right next to it was the president, lying dead on the ground. Okay, uh, okay, that was... that totally throws whatever I thought was in the crapper, the... So, okay, I, I guess that wasn't actually a person sitting up there. How can that be? I see. There were indeed traces that something had caught fire on the rooftop. It was just a small fire, so I was able to put it out myself by myself. So, the president's death was John's fault? But wouldn't that make it this an accident, sir? 
And then, what did you do with the fallen head? I took it apart and brought the pieces up to the roof and put it back together. So, you put out the fire and even put the fallen head back on the roof. Which means you were hiding evidence. We can't be having that, you naughty little pup. I didn't do it on purpose. I really did just forget to turn off the heater. When the legs broke, the stand had, would have tilted if Mazilla's head was on top of the stand. It would have fallen, fa would have fallen off, so the head fell down because of the fire. Yeah, so if that's the case, it, it, I also have a pretty good idea what caused the fire. There's a flam flammable can next to the heater. It seems someone is lacking in safety awareness. <laughs> Was it really just an accident? If that's the truth, then what was the president doing here? I, I, I don't know. There was no way, uh, no one else around when I was there. You expect me to believe that? The president wouldn't have just come to a place like this without a reason, you know. Indeed, the president's reason for coming here is still a huge mystery. Two nights ago, he met with Judge Courtney on the roof uh, on the Grand Tower. And last night, he was here at the film lot. He meet with John. I'll have to listen to John's testimony very carefully. Okay. Okay, while I was setting up on the equipment on the roof, I used the heater. After that, I went down to the practice, but I forgot to turn it off. My mom called me, so I left the film lot. I came back to the lot after the film call was over. Brazil's head, that was when the roof had fallen. And right next to it was the president's slide. When is, when that thing be like on top of its body though? What was the state of the body? I did get a good look, look, because it was dark. Hmm, suddenly become as quiet as a mouse. This John doesn't really want to remember anything about the body. Is that the only reason why he's gone so quiet? Should I press him for more details? Of course you do, you always press him further. You didn't get a good look, then how'd you know he was dead? Uh, that's, well. He's clearly shaken, he must be hiding something. Get over here, tell me! <laughs> Wouldn't you normally call for, for help if you see someone collapse on the ground? Or you did nothing of the sort. You let him, let him, that man die a slow, painful death. But, but, buddy, he was already dead. Is that so? You seem quite certain that the president was already dead. Now, is there a reason for that, I wonder? Hold it. The guy was collapsed on the ground, and right next to him was the fallen monster's head. I'm not stupid. It wasn't hard to imagine what happened. You can imagine whatever you want, but there's no way for you to know that he was dead. You actually checked to make sure the president was dead, didn't you? Uh, yeah, th that's right. I'm scared, but I got up close to the body and checked to see if he was breathing. I thought as much. Is that where the stain came from, maybe, then? However, why would he hide that? There must be a reason. Please tell me the stain of the body at that time. A at first, I didn't know he was dead. I would have realized sooner if there had been any blood. But there wasn't a single drop, and his clothes were completely spotless. Uh, here we go, found, found the contradiction. Either way, he wasn't breathing. That's how I knew he was already dead. Would you please append those statements to your testimony, so I could crush them? I didn't know right away that he was dead. There was no blood, and his clothes were spotless. And, bada bing, bada booyah! I'm not even gonna wag, wag my little finger at you. His clothes were spotless. It, yeah, that's right. You got a problem with it, old man? John, it is painfully obvious that you were desperately trying to hide something from me. Don't you dare. You think you can hide something for this finger? W what are you going on about? I I'm not hiding anything. You are hiding. Something about this yellow stain on the president's clothes, correct? <laughs> ah! <laughs> You spilled mustard on stains on him. I know, knew it. You were eating a hot dog that night, weren't you? No, I wasn't eating a hot dog. No, nobody can hide their hot dogs from me. Nobody. <laughs> hot dog. Why didn't you leave it entirely out of your testimony? In fact, you made no mention of it. Only serves to cast more suspicion upon yourself. Uh, th th that's because. Hope you have a convincing explanation. Uh, Judge Courtney. Allow me to explain. Why are you... The yellow stain left on the president's chest is almost certainly li Lion Lily Paul. Lion Lily? 
when I met with the president on the roof of the Grand Tower two nights ago. I brought him a bouquet of lion lilies. Lion lilies are beautiful flowers with stunning golden petals. Some of the pollen from the lilies must have got, gotten on the pres president's suit. We don't see it in the footage, though. Oh. Well, like, okay, maybe it was bot. We don't see her hands, though, so it, maybe she was carrying it. We didn't see it. Huh, but... Uh, I didn't see any lilies in the security footage, though. They were simply obscured by the pres president's body. <laughs> All right, there we go. Why did you bring a bouquet? The that I I cannot say. Oh, come on. Hey, hey, you're keeping way too many secrets. You won't tell us why you met with the president or the reason you brought him flowers. My apologies. However, I did give him the bouquet. That much is true. When the president's body was discovered, we didn't find any flowers. I, I honestly don't know how that could be. Ha, huh. I misjudge. All your answers have been too vague. You can't say this, and you don't know that. If you accept flimsy testimony like that in your trials. Hold it. Hey, cut it out. J John. I threw the flowers away. You threw them away? So there were flowers near the body when you found it. Yeah, that's right. They were on top of the president's body. They had been crushed as flat as pancake, though. I see, so the flowers were squashed by Mozilla's head, too. A large amount of pollen got stuck to the president's suit. That seems to be the gist of it. However, why did you go out of your way to dispose of the flowers? He knew the meaning behind them? No reason. There is, there's some meaning behind it. So John's not going to, to tell us any anything either. His mother and son both have a last secret. Overruled! Overruled? That is not true. At the very least, I can tell you why John threw away those flowers. Huh? John, you saw, le saw me leaving the house with those flowers in hand, did you not? Huh. I get it. Son saw, John saw the flowers and thought of his mom. Threw them away in order to protect Judge Courtney from being suspected. Oh. Th that's not true. You're all wrong. That was his worst lie yet. I see. It's all coming together, sort of. <laughs> I often decorate our house with those flowers. The bouquet must have reminded him of the So the pup happens to find the flowers from his mother's bouquet on top of the body. That's why he threw them away and kept silent about the body. Ha! That's a tiny little story I've, if I've ever heard one. What's wrong with that? I suppose you prefer untidy, messy stories, Agent Lang. Don't tell me you've forgotten already, Missy. The pup, this pup confessed that he com caused the monster's head to fall last night. Oh, that's true, but... He's currently the only suspect in the president's murder. I feel like... Based on the, uh... The way the table was set next to the heater there, right? And the way it was sort of falling over. It looks like the head which instead should have fallen the other way, right? I, it like it shouldn't have fallen uh, off the off the building. It would have just fallen like to the side of it or backwards. So I, I think it's, it is true, and there are many reasons to suspect John. However. There's someone other than John who is far more suspicious. What'd you say? John himself was kidnapped by that very person not too long ago. And we rescued him from the refrigerator warehouse nearby, near the harbor, pal. Refrigerator warehouse? That's right, pal. Ah, the sunshine warehouse. Was that even on the map earlier? Refrigeration was turned on, so we, he wasn't about to freeze to death. But if he hadn't yelled out, yelled out for help, we would have never found him. As the sleeping drugs wore off, he was finally able to call out for help. Sleeping drugs. Huh. I recall correctly, when you were kidnapped, uh, same person. So it's going to be the person in the red coat. That's right. There was a bottle lying on the floor of the refrigerator warehouse. It was the same thing that was used on me not long ago. Yeah, what the fuck? I don't understand. What What could possibly be the... The person's reason for doing all this shit. That sleepy ZZ stuff, it's super powerful. It's a kick to the gonads. Sleepy ZZ. 
Sleepy's ballsy. How about it, Agent Lang? John is clearly a victim. There's a mastermind at work behind the scenes of this case. I don't know anything about this so-called mastermind. You say they were here last night. I still don't know for sure yet. Ha! Huh, it's not like you can be so vague, Mr. Prosecutor. Indeed, I still don't have any evidence that ties the mastermind to this murder. Is there something, someone else? Is there anyone besides John who had the opportunity to murder the president? Ah, ah, ah! Gloves, hog, cow, demon lord! That's it, oh my god! As I thought, in the end, that puppet's our only suspect. Oh, Wrong! Is there one more suspect, Agent Lang? What's this? Didn't we prove it earlier? Last night, there was one more person here. Lay's the best. You're saying he's the one who did it. Last night, John was not alone. Lay's the best was here too. Shouldn't we consider him to be a new suspect? Lay's the best. Killed the president. It's entirely possible. Lay's the best. It can't be. The same guy from 12 years ago. <laughs> 12 years ago. That keeps popping up. Damn it, when are you gonna tell me about that? Well, well last change. It all happened over 12 years ago. Back then, he and my old man were close friends, and our clan was protected, protected the president's life. Lang, don't tell me you're the one from 12 years ago. You got it. Ain't this nice? They're finally going to prison, where you belong. 12 years is a long time coming for a suspended sentence. Don't you agree? Agent Lang, what happened 12 years ago? I demand you tell me! Nothing that concerns you. Damn it, come on! Somebody tell me something! On the contrary, you might just have some sort of connection with this case. Huh. And I suppose you have some proof, Mr. Prosecutor. Show me evidence that there's a connection between this case and the one 12 years ago. Evidence, you say? If you don't have any evidence, there's no point in talking about it. Is there any evidence that connects the case with what happened 12 years ago? I don't even know what the incident 12 years ago was supposed to be. Oh, that thing he laid to rest in front of the flower bed 12 years ago. You must, you simply must retrieve it. That right there. Booyah, baby cakes. This is a report written by Patricia Rowland to Blaze to Best regarding Nightly. Please read this part here. The thing he laid to rest near the flower bed 12 years ago. That's not all. Take, take a look at this as well. That's what he was digging up. He was trying to find that, that thing. This letter was sent to Jill Crane, who was murdered two days ago. Although the sender is currently unknown, here is written as follows. Please get revenge for 12 years ago. What? 12 years ago? Agent Lang, something big is happening here. Jill Crane's murder two days ago, and now the president's murder today. There has to be some connection there. And the key to solving it lies in what happened 12 years ago, does it not? You're asking me to reopen the old wounds of the Lang clan. No, I'm asking you to suck it up and quit being a little bitch about it. Agent Lang, I beg of you. Uh, who, uh, who was that just now? Who the fucking dicks now? Uh, Shifu! Oh my god, it's the Mafia! You guys, what are you all doing here? Was that his men or something? Yeah. We followed you here, Shifu! Uh, we heard that Shifu was investigating the incident from 12 years ago! You idiots! Bakas, all of you! I'm not your boss anymore. Get back to your post. No post. Sir! We can't do that! What'd you say? Are you disobeying my order? Shifu! We also beg of you! We investigate the SS5 incident from 12 years ago! None of us can ever forget that case! We know you feel the same way, Shifu! Agent Lang, I mean your former subordinates desire to reinvestigate the case. You think you can solve the mysteries of that case? Perhaps I can, with your help. Huh. I got it, I got it. I accept your invitation. All right, calm down, everyone. Now then, with that decided, I guess it's my turn to shine. Okay. We're investigating a case from the past, right? Then guess what the best tool for that is? The little Mr. Thief. Oh, here we go again. Right, we have the case files from the, pa the past case so I can recreate it. Unfortunately, I don't have the case files. 
Huh? What do you mean? Access to those case files is restricted. It's being treated as a highly classified information. Why is that? I don't know. But it seems like there were a lot of things that they wanted to keep hidden. Even what I know, even what I know, is limited to what was published in the newspaper back then. That will, that will not be a problem. In any case, please tell us what you know. Tell me what the fuck it is. Sure. Finally. Okay. Anyway, that's all that happened. <laughs> no! The SS5 incident. The Super Saiyan 5 incident. The incident occurred on a winter day 12 years ago. It was the 10th of February. The police department in this country received a call from a group of kidnappers. We've kidnapped President Wang, they said. Kidnapped? The S5 incident was the case of the President Wang's kidnapping. Demanded a ransom of $100 million. $100 million! $100 million? Wait, just how much is that? It's a large amount of money. She's having trouble visualizing it. That night, my old man was the last person to meet with the president. And damn it, that man and his pork chops. God bless, God rest his soul. They were, they were together at the Zheng Fai's embassy until the midnight on February 10th. Hmm, I'm gonna bet then. Maybe maybe the, the president got switched out. Like, I'm betting that's that might be it. It might be that this, the president has, that has been there has been like a cover up or a fake one. Like maybe one of his, uh, one of his uh, body doubles or something. And Judge Courtney knew that, or I, I betting it's gonna be something like that. And she was trying to keep it, trying to keep it hidden. Hmm. Maybe like maybe he died or so, something happened with the kidnappers, and they had to they had to replace him. Together at the Zeng Embassy until the midnight on February 10th. After that, no one knows what the president was doing up until he was kidnapped. With the president's life at stake, the Zeng government frankly gathered the money. We could also explain his, well, his change towards uh, Lang and his clan, right? After that, the ransom was delivered and the president was returned safe and sound. So, President Wang has been the president since 12 years ago? That's really amazing. Yeah, fuck terms of office. Well, being in office for so long is a small part of how amazing that man is. Lang seemed a bit happy when he said that. And what happened to the, the kidnappers? Well, a top secret covert investigation was carried out. Then a secret trial was held. A trial? Does that mean the suspect was caught? The suspect was... Patricia Rowland. Holy dicks! The reason you came to the prison a few days ago. Ah. Yeah, I was put on an extended leave from Interpol. So I decided to go back and reinvestigate what happened 12 years ago. First, I had to get a look at the face of my target. So the trial 12 years ago ended with a not guilty verdict. Yeah. Back then, my old man was in charge of every aspect of the president's security. He took responsibility for the kidnapping and was relieved of his post as bodyguard. Oh, I see. But he continued to investigate as a regular police officer, until he finally found the culprit. And it was none other than Patricia Rowland. There was no way she could be innocent. However, the result was a not guilty verdict. In the end, the case went, uns went unsolved. Crushing both body and, my and soul, my old man resigned from the police. What was the basis for arresting Patricia Rowland? There was a lot of evidence. At least that's what I think. But I can't see those documents for myself. So that's where my story ends. What should we do? If only this was inf much information. Even the little thief would have a hard time producing a recreation. Ah! There's really nothing we can do. Oh, good! Somebody said hold it. Uh. Looks like you could use some help. I bet it's me. Who's that? I knew it. Me too, you dipshit! Francisca! Oh my god! It's Mr. Shields, too! We finished up the trial and finally managed to catch up with you guys. T Damn, you guys can run fast. Here, take this. This is... Ah, it's the case files for the SS5 incident, sir! Oh, hot diggity doodah day! When Roland met you 12 years ago during the trial, I caught my interest. I looked into it immediately and got in touch with Interpol. Alright, let's have a look at it. We'll probably read it anyway, but just in case. The President Zeng Fa Jishu Wang was kidnapped on February 10, 12 years ago. The kidnappers demanded a ransom of 100 million. Dai Long Lang confirmed that on the evening of the incident, the President was at Zeng Fa Embassy until midnight. 
Prosecutor plays the best. Patricia Ro suspect Patricia Rowland. Expect no less from you, Francisca. Don't get the wrong idea, Nias Edward. I didn't prepare those these documents for you, the former prosecutor. Ah yes, be all Cinderella, John. You know I love it. Shut up! I did it for the sake of the investigation. Investigator taking up the case, but case his father left behind. Sis. I thought information on the S5 incident was restricted to the public. <laughs> oh, that's right, I forgot I called you that. I called you sis. That restriction was placed by the prosecutor in charge of the case. Blaze the best. And we all know he can be- he's burning in hell right now! Blaze the best with the prosecutor in charge? Him! It doesn't surprise me though, I mean, again, again, showing the connection. However... As a result of the trial just now, Blaze's authority has been revoked. It's all thanks to his son! Yeah! Sebastian! Ultimate Sin and Bun! Sebas Sebastian, by bringing down his father, the door to his pat this past case has been opened. Oscar did a best, currently wrapping things up in British or Ol Roland's trial. He told me to re relay this message to you. Leave Pops and his cohorts to me. You guys just take care of the, the case on your end. Fuck yeah, Sidman Bond, I love you. Ha! He's become quite reliable right before our very demon eyes. Truly. Alrighty then. This is perfect. Now that we have the files, just leave the recreation to me. Indeed. Well then, let us begin. Let us begin! According to these documents, it appears that the incident took place right in front of the Tower Plaza. Let's head to the plaza right away. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! It's Christmas! 